to the Motorsport Coaching Podcast, sponsored by Motivate Training and Management. This is a podcast where we talk to drivers and industry experts to help you maximize your performances on and off the track. Let's get started with today's show. Hello, guys, and welcome to episode 58 of the Motorsport Coaching Podcast. I am your host, Belinda Risley, and we're up to episode three of the Motorsport Industry Conference Outtakes. This week, I'm joined by Stuart Walter, who was a previous guest on the Motorsport Coaching Podcast, episode number 47. Um, Stuart is the athlete secret weapon, and he's the founder of Elite Mindset Institute. He's that guy that the elite called to get the head in the game. He's a professional clinical hypnotherapist and NLP practitioner, a published author and international speaker, and a workshop presenter. He's highly skilled in getting the most out of professional drivers, including Matt Campbell, Jackson Evans, and Hunter McRae. In this episode, guys, called Master Your Racing, you're going to learn about how to get your head into game, how to master your thoughts, and why you should take mindset and performance seriously. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, and thanks again for tuning in. Again, if you appreciate these uh, podcast i'd love if you could head over to itunes subscribe and write us a review and each review would get noticed every episode and you're going in the draw to win our monthly prize in 2020 things are going to be a little bit different hopefully anti-app the professionalism of these podcasts so stay tuned i do thank you very much for listening guys and we'll speak to you next week bye hi there and welcome to Motorsport Industry Conference. I'm Stuart Walter, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and pleased to be here with you today to help you understand more about mind and mindset. Now Belinda's asked me to help out um, and yeah, before I go on too far, I'm going to be going backwards and forwards to and from the screen to help you understand, but I'm also noticing that with this camera, as soon as I move, it kind of wants to refocus. So. You might play a few little tricks with your eyes, but basically what we're going to do is just work together and make it all happen. So, okay, let me get back to it. Stuart Walter, the Athlete Secret Weapon. Now, why Athlete Secret Weapon? Well, basically, if you found the edge in your sport, would you be telling everyone about it? For a lot of people, no. I've got 36 world champions, yeah, I can only mention a few of them. I've got international soccer superstars I work with. I've got bull riders over in the United States in the professional bull riding circuit. Now, there's a couple of names that you might be familiar with as far as Australian motorsport. You're Matt Campbell, okay, Porsche Carrera Cup, Australian Porsche GT3 in the Porsche Pyramid now. Went overseas, won the Australian Porsche Carrera Cup Championship here in Australia, went to an international shooter and he won that. Then became a Porsche junior factory driver and since moved on to some incredible things over there. So Matt was one of my clients from about 10 years ago now. Now, I've been doing this 13 years, working as a professional clinical hypnotherapist. Now, hypnosis is something different, probably for you, but it's been around for a very long time. And within Australia, I'm on the forefront of working with hypnosis for sport and peak performance. Like I said, currently 36 world champions I work with. Matt Campbell is one. Jackson Evans, another recent addition to the Porsche Super Cup overseas. Now, again, with Jackson, went through that structure went through the Porsche Pyramid. How he's then grown from there and developed himself as a person, just got to follow on Facebook and social media. Once again, won the Porsche Carrera Cup Series here, went overseas the international shootout, became a Porsche Junior Factory Driver, and as of yesterday, now signed as well for another 12 months as a Porsche Junior Factory Driver in Super Cup. So all these athletes have something in common. What is in common? How are you so different to what, how they are? Well, you're not. Okay? Every mind works exactly the same way. And that's what I'm here to do, is to help you to understand the human mind, what limits your performance, what successes you can have by managing this. And then I'll just talk you through some of the, uh, I guess the tools, the resources that can help you. Now, at the end of this year, I'm going to give you options. I'm going to give you options whether you want to sign up for free enrolment into the Elite Mindset Institute, which is mine. I'm the CEO and founder of Elite Mindset Institute. If you want to, there's an online program as well. Okay, online program basically, it's an eight week program specializing in sports and sports performance. 
If you want the edge in your sport, this is one way to really help you. This eight week program is probably like four or five, six sessions working one on one with me as far as uh, mindset and working in my clinic, which is actually just next door behind here. If you wish to work with me, I can certainly help you. Just please get in contact with me. No pressure, no big sales job, no nothing, because look, this is your choice, this is your career, this is your passion. You're gonna take it as far as you can choose to go. And this is exactly what I do for my, I guess for all my athletes, for all the people I work with. Okay, I help them to understand their potential. So their potential is, is seen in sporting fields around the world. No Olympic athlete has ever been interviewed that says, oh, didn't think that would ever happen. So there's got to be an element of self-belief, self-confidence. There's also an element of managing what you can control. So I'm going to help you understand that. Now, with sports hypnosis, it's different to a clinical hypnosis. Okay, you probably got this preconceived idea about um, hypnosis, making people do funny things. So if you've ever seen, you know, the comedy stage hypnosis, if you've ever seen that, you would probably start to question what I can or cannot do. The comedy stage hypnosis is quite funny because you pull a group of people out of the, the audience, you sit them all down, and you make them do strange things as far as entertainment. But I question you to, to understand, if you want to watch any, um, any stage hypnosis, Mark Anthony or Anthony Laffin. So Mark Anthony, Anthony Laffin, do a bit of a search for those guys. Two very good friends of mine in my association, and we had a lot of fun. What they do is real. What you see is real. What I do is basically the same thing. So let's imagine as, as an example, we'll pull a group of people out, we hit the music, ballet music. I can get someone dressed in denim, chains, leather, gear, tats, you name it. When you hear this music, you become a ballerina. It's what we call a trigger-based response. The trigger is when you hear music, the response is you become a ballerina. Now, here's this bikey with no skills, no abilities, no talents, prancing around on stage like he thinks he's a ballerina. But that's the difference, he thinks he is. Now, consider that concept. And now, I go on stage. I pull a ballerina out of the crowd, sit her on the chair. When you hear this music, you become the best ballerina in the world. What's the difference? There is no difference. What the difference is, is the fact that I'm starting with someone with skills, with abilities and talents. All we do is harness the power and the skills that you've already got to achieve this incredible result. So here we now have the best ballerina in the world with skills, with abilities, with talents, free to do what she does. And she's out of this conscious mind. She doesn't actually have to think. She just trusts all the skills that she's actually got within her. And it's just, bang, triggered. Now, I can't make you do anything you don't want to do. I can't make you do anything stupid. Okay, so if you get to see these people being pulled out of the crowd and go, right, when you do this, that's for entertainment value. That's making people do stupid things. What I'm a specialist in is getting people that are doing hmm, stupid things and make them do good. Make them become the champion they actually are already inside them. Now, I'm going to um, give you a bit of an information about your potential. Okay, your potential is incredibly powerful. Every athlete that I've worked with, every race driver, it's all the same. Okay, other race drivers that you might know of. So we've got Matt Campbell, we've got Jackson Evans. You ever heard of Hunter McElroy? Hunter McElroy? Same, same. Formula Ford Championship here in Australia. Went into the national, into the international Road to Indy scholarship shootout. He won that. He's just got back from his first 12 month stint over in the United States, chasing his dream of becoming an IndyCar champion. All these athletes have worked with me. They've all worked with me because I know how to get the most out of them. And it's all down to this peak performance stuff, the best you've ever done. So these athletes, they don't do anything different. Your brain works exactly the same way, and that's what we're here to do. Now, if you've got pen and paper, I want you to write this down. If you're good at maths or no good at maths, 
I'm sure someone can work this out for you. Now, you all understand potential. Do you understand potential? Great. The best you can ever do is 100%. So when you hear people say, oh, I'm going to give it 110%, how? You can't give 10% more than you can actually give, correct? If you achieve that, let's just say, for example, you're doing a 10 second 100 meter sprint. If you then drop to 9.9, .9, that's your new potential. It's 100%, correct? You can only ever do your best. You can't do 10% better. So think about that. Your existing results, think about it. The best you've ever done in a car, in racing, in karting, the best you've ever achieved, how was it? That is what we're going to work on today, getting you up to this point. Now, I'm an athlete. I've come from martial arts, Taekwondo. I did state and national titles. I understand the, the success by using the mind. My success came with my mother, who was a clinical hypnotherapist, which is what I'm doing right now. Now, what I understood from that is I had the skills. I was fast, I was strong, I was flexible. I just didn't have the right mental state I needed to be in to get the best of my, my sport and my life, the results. So my existing results, I'm going to say about 80%. My existing results equal my potential minus my fears. Existing result, your existing results are exactly the same as this. Your potential minus your fears. Think about it. So you may not think, I'm scared. Probably not. But what you do as an athlete, I've been in one of your cars. I've been in one of the Porsche Cup cars. I understand what it's like as a me, me human, to understand what you do as racing drivers. There's certain fundamentals of the human mind that exist. There's 16 fundamentals of which I will give you access at the end of this webinar seminar because these fundamentals are essential there's 16 of them 16 fundamentals of the human mind that exist these are always in operation number two your unconscious mind is here for one reason protection safety it's protecting you from potential hurt potential harm physically and emotionally Think about that word, potential hurt. It may or may not happen. It could or couldn't happen. Potential hurt, physically and emotionally. Think about it. Think about what you do. 330 kilometers an hour. Down the main straight and then you've got to bend. If I took all your fears away, you'd just be going straight there and into a wall, wouldn't you? Probably not ideal. There's a certain element of fear. As race drivers, you will probably start applying the brakes there. For me, not having experience before, I'd probably start applying brakes here. Because not knowing the potential of the car or my skills. So, what if you could apply the brakes there? What if you could accelerate quicker? What if you had total belief in yourself? Minimise fear. Maximise performance and your potential. Pretty cool, isn't it? So this is what I'm going to do, is to help you manage the fears. Because your existing results, let's just say 80%, equal your potential minus your fears. Now I'm going to give you a bit of an example on this. Um, just bear with me, I'm just going to be very interactive with this. Normally when I'm doing my seminars, I'm up here on a whiteboard, I've got all sorts of things going. So this is quite limited in the way I'm doing it, so just stick with me. We can make all this happen. I normally say, if you've got any questions, ooh, I'm back in focus now. I was going to say, normally, if you've got any questions, email them through. Um, you can't, because this is not live.
What you can do though is uh, send Melinda some emails, ask questions or send them directly through to me. I'll make sure that there's the links, my email address, website, contact details and everything in this information. So with this, following this. Okay. Where were we? Fears. Where are fears created? Where are they created? I use the example in my office next door. Can you have a fear of sharks? sitting here. No, because there's none in the office next door. Can you have a fear of sharks standing on the beach? Probably not. Because sharks don't come up onto the sand. They don't chase you on the beach. What if you had one toe just in the water? Can you have a fear of sharks? The reality, no because they're not going to be in that shallow water. If you're up to your neck in water and there's one hanging off your leg, is that a fear? No, that's reality. So think about fear. Where is fear created? Fear is created through thoughts. Thoughts go back to survival. We're just saying number one or number two fundamental of the human mind is protection. Simple, really. Now, I'm going to share with you um, existing results of an existing client. This has been a measured, measured result of what happens when you can focus yourself, manage nerves. Think about it. All right. 400 meter hurdle track. It's more like an egg, but hey, you get that. So. 400 meters, start finish line. Now, I had a client who was dragged in by his coach, kicking and screaming, saying, I don't have a problem. He was already number one in the country. Under 17 year old, 400 meter hurdle. Now, when I started working with him, when he first came in, 56.5 was his personal best. That's 400 meters. Hurdles. Now, within one month, okay, so this is one, two, three sessions. The fourth one was actually at the time he did this. I was there at the state title, national title selections. I was there at the track when he did this. Now, within a month, Dropped his time 56.5 to 52.6. That is a reduction, my friends. 3.9 seconds. That's a reduction of 3.9 seconds. Now, this is where it's interesting for you. He was here crossing the line, the rest of the pack about five meters behind. Okay. So, how does this look on track? Massive. What I normally do in this situation when I'm working or at a demonstration or working with corporates in a corporate event, this is where I get a string line. I get someone to just walk out there and keep walking, walking, walking as a visual representation of how this looks on track. Now, if you can imagine um, how it look. And probably an average house. Average, no, it's probably a very long house. 27, it's more like the Bible land these days. 27.6 meters. Think about this on track. Think about this and what you could gain because if you do the calculations now, this is based on testing. This is based on his times. a 7% reduction in times. 7%. Racing is different because you alone cannot change that much because you are to sit in there, aren't you? But you can imagine breaking 
split second later, accelerating a little bit earlier. If you could remove fears, if you could take this game out of your head, and if you could increase 0.01 of your time or reduce your time by 0.01 per corner, how would that look? Pretty good, isn't it? Now, as an example, I'm going to use um, one of my Porsche GT3 drivers, one of the Pro-Am drivers. Now, I worked with him, and one of the first sessions I did was very similar, getting to understand fear, getting into that peak performance mindset. Now, if you've ever seen any, maybe, videos or photos of, I was going to say my clients or on my Instagram posts, you'll probably find a couple of images of drivers with their helmet on. This is how I work with my clients. When the helmet is on, I'm doing the session. So then every time they hop in the car, the last thing on is their helmet. As soon as the helmet goes on, it bang, it triggers this peak performance mindset, which relaxes them. Relaxed muscle is a fast muscle. Relaxed muscle is a strong muscle. And when you look at this, you can understand by relaxing, trusting yourself, trusting your skills, trusting the team, trusting the car. This is controlling what you can control. Getting nervous is going to transfer into the car, isn't it? So if you're tight and you're turning and all your muscles are tense, you're going to be fighting it. And there was an interesting video I saw years ago from Sir Jackie Stewart. And I'm sure if you're in motor racing, you know Jackie Stewart. Now, what he was explaining is the mindset. He was taking all day, especially the last 30 minutes, to get into that space, get into that zone where he could perform his best. As he was explaining, the car is alive. And as drivers, you would understand that. The conditions, the tyres, the fuel load. Everything affects how fast you can go. Now, as he was saying, is the last 30 minutes before he hopped in the car, he would have this gradual relaxation process. They're getting down so he almost just felt like a blob sitting in behind the wheel. All the emotions just gone, part of the machine. But what he said, which was incredible, is when you're holding on to the steering wheel and you're tense, when you, as you would know, when you're hitting the apex, when you're hitting corners, when you're starting to spin, what you've got is you've got the feedback. And if you're fighting it, you've got these jerky movements. So by relaxing, it relaxes your muscles, and therefore when you do turn and it naturally bounces, you're a lot more relaxed, so you don't have this fighting effect on the wheel. As you were saying, the car is alive. Every lap, less fuel. Every lap, potentially better tyre quality as you start increasing the pressure. The longer the race goes on, the worse it actually gets. But this is interesting because your brain, one, is not designed to go 330 k's an hour into a corner. So you've always got to look at that element of fear. Everything is going to be different every lap. So you can't be in this same zone all the time. You've got to be able to adjust and adapt and your brain is incredibly powerful to be able to do it. So you look at this. What I also want to show you is the power of this situation. Okay, he was crossing the line here. Let's call him Chris. Okay, because that's his name, Chris. He was crossing the line. The rest of the pack were five meters behind. Now, 27.6 metres was the reduction in time, which was the effective gap that he now had. So you would imagine, if you were coming down the main straight, and you saw your opposition disappearing into the distance, 27 metres ahead of you, when you think of that main straight, that's 100 metres. It's a third of the main straight. But there's more. This crowd, his opposition, they didn't 
focus on what he was doing. What they did, because he was there, you would think the 27 metres plus the 5 would be 32 metres, wouldn't you? 32.6. But what happened? That these people here were too busy not looking at him, but they then reflected on themselves. They tensed up. They ended up going backwards. So you would think the 27 plus the 5, you would think he would have won that race by 32 metres, wouldn't you? 45 metres. Half the length of the main straight, he won that race by. Because these people saw what he was doing, they tightened up, they went backwards, it should have been 32, they went backwards at the rate of 13 metres just by him doing better. So, think about that as race drivers. If you know that your opposition are always going to win and they've got the confidence, where does it affect? It generally re reflects on the opposition. They end up going backwards more. So this is where you probably heard people saying, just fake it till you make it. Fake the confidence. Everyone else play mind games, try and pull your op opponents back. You don't need to do that. You walk around with an, with an air of confidence and trust and belief in yourself, your opposition will fall back anyway. You've got a greater chance of winning, even if you're not good. You've got a greater chance of winning because your opposition are going to crumble under the pressure because they don't know how to manage their emotions. So I'm going to help you out to understand managing emotions. So hopefully, if you want to, get a screenshot of this. Okay, so if you got that, that's awesome. And then we can move on. Okay, so Chris, what happened? Yeah, unfortunately, he tore his hamstring, missed out on the Worlds by 0 0.01, and missed out on the Olympics by about the same distance. Unfortunately, he didn't exactly make it, but this is what sport is all about. Sport is not going to, just by working with me, you're not going to get to number one in the world. That's not guaranteed at all. Because when you think about it, I've got 13 professional golfers. They can't all be number one in the world, can they? At 13 different times, potentially. But it's probably not going to happen. Especially if you look at athletes, injuries. You look at cars, you look at funding, you look at injuries, you look at all sorts of things that could go wrong or right in your sport. But managing the mindset is all about becoming the best version of you. So whatever happens, if you have a mechanical breakdown, it is what it is. Okay? Can you control that? Probably not. So what can you control is you. Why would you choose to be upset? Why would you choose to be angry? Because when you think about it, who chooses your emotions? You do. Who chooses your actions, reactions? Who chooses your behaviours, your beliefs, your habits? You do. So why would you choose to be angry by something out of your control? Breaking. Sure, disappointing. But when you hold on to it, it's creating all sorts of neural pathways and messages in your brain that will start holding back next time so you don't disappoint yourself. So, what happens if you win? Sure, you can get upset, you can get angry if you win, but why would you choose to? Think about it. So you control your actions, your behaviours, your beliefs, your habits, you're in control. And this is what we're doing with uh, sport and mindset. It's getting you in control of what you can control. Managing the nerves of the outs and fears. And look at the benefits. 7% reduction in time. Now, I'll give you a bit of an idea. I've got a, well, I've kind of pre-logged it. Now, I worked with another, Port, oh, this is the Porsche GT3 uh, Cup Challenge Pro-Am driver that won the series one two years ago, Anthony Gilbertson. Now, we did a lot of visualisation based on one of his races, and he was saying his personal best was about 123.9 or something. And... Get where this actually was. I'll see if I can find it. Where was it? It's not exactly telling me schedule events. I'll tell you something. It might have been Queensland Raceway. Yeah, it might have been Queensland Raceway. Um, so we worked with 
with Anthony and said, right, okay, so you've got to visualize it. What is the end result? When everything is relaxed, how do you feel behind the wheel? Start that uh, peak performance state, getting you nice and relaxed, put your helmet on there and just trust the car, trust yourself, trust the skills. And he went out and he was, we did a lot of visualization with him. Um, it's more involved, so I won't give it to you all now. But the more visualization we did, I said, right, bang, you cross the line. Now look up and tell me what the time was. And he said something about, where is it? Um, yeah, he was aiming to a 122.5. Okay, that was his visualization. He said, oh, I looked up and I saw 122.5. Now the reality was 121.9. 121.9, so it's, it was about 1.6, 1.7 seconds off his PB on the same car, on the same track that he already had with the data from Matt Campbell. Think about where 1.7 seconds would put you on track against your opposition. Now Anthony was also one of the first uh, Pro-Am drivers, let me see if I can find that, sorry very interactive as you can see, Anthony was one of the first Pro-Am drivers that beat, where is it? that beat the pro drivers and got a pole position. Okay, so think about that in the Porsche GT3 Cup Series. He's beating some of these Porsche pro drivers, being a pro-am driver. He said, mate, the quality lap I did was crazy. I have no idea how I did it. It just came from nowhere. I actually feel way better in the car with my helmet on than I ever have. Every time I've driven with a, with a helmet on before, I'm just all over the place. This was so different. I feel like I'm in my own little world. Simple as not. That was the benefit of it. So when you think about a lap in your car or cart or truck or motorbike, whatever you're in, on or around, think about the reduction. Where would that put you against your opposition? Now you look at the V8 series now. You can have the top 20 cars within a second. That would then put you with a 1.2, 1.5 second reduction. Already, you're going to be winning. So let's move on. Let's get all this happening. Because the mind is very powerful. Everything you've ever done, thought, dreamt, understood, it's in your head. I'm going to teach you now um, fear. What is fear? Okay. A lot of athletes I work with, a lot of coaches I work with, they go, but it's good to feel fear. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's only good to feel fear if you think it is. Now, this is all about beliefs. This was my home for years. Six metres by six metre mat. Taekwondo, martial arts. This is me. There's my opposition. This person is trained to kill me. That's how we work. Now, I was good at sport. Fast, strong, flexible, great technique. So, why was I inconsistent? I was inconsistent results because inconsistent thinking. I was working, to, I was away and traveling two weeks every month. So how could I effectively train and be in the zone all the time? Again, fast, strong, powerful, but I wasn't in the right headspace to win. I needed some aggression within. I needed to be able to harness the power I've got, my anger and get it to a certain point where I knew every time I stepped onto here, 10 foot tall, bulletproof, no one could get me. So I had to train myself. Now, what I did is, I mentioned my mum before, she's a clinical hypnotherapist. Did I mention her? If not, I have now. 40 years ago, she was one of the, I guess, the, one of the instigators with hypnosis within the country and started working towards that. When I was coming into one of my black belt gradients, I was explaining to her how I was feeling. 
inconsistent. Um, I had a lot of timber breaking. I need to do a lot of sparring against one, two, three, four, six, uh, second, third degree black belts and instructors for my grading. It was a full on day. So what I was saying is I need to be in the right headspace. So how we do that is quite simple. And this is how I work with athletes. The right headspace is your in the zone. If you've ever had one of those races where you've been in the zone, that's what we need to create. Now, having one of those experiences in the past, um, I know what it feels like to be in it. Been there, done it. Ten foot tall, bulletproof. These people had no no chance when I was on when I was focused and dialed in. Absolutely not. So, how did I get there? We've got to think about this and go. What is important? What is that trigger? And this is what I've had to create for myself. So when I'm now working with clients, I'll tell you exactly how this works. Now, where are you most relaxed, okay? Where are you most relaxed? It could be at home, it could be surfing with friends, it could be fishing, it could be on the couch, it could be watching TV, it could be on holidays. Where are you most relaxed? Best result. Where is your best ever result in racing? What's your best ever experience? Okay, this is experience. This is maybe not you racing, but it might be meeting someone like Lewis Hamilton or meeting Scott McLaughlin or watching this video. So what is your best experience? What's your best experience in motorsport? Okay, and now, what I want you to do future pacing what future pacing means is going out into the future to visualize and experience having won what it is you're aiming to do so if it's Formula 1 going out into the, into the future to imagine signing a Formula 1 team holding up the trophy whatever it might be it might be in V8s, it might be a single seater, it might be in Indy, it might be wherever it might be, it might be rally, rally cross, it could be in motorbikes. So go out into the future to get yourself experience and what it would be like to do that. Now all this, I can capture these emotions. So the most relaxed you've ever been, because we need you to relax. The best ever result, because it draws on your um, memory of belief. The best experience, because it makes you feel good. So we've got relax, known results and experience. There's your experience, which lifts you up, the future pacing, which puts you into the future. All these emotions can be captured. So as soon as, well, in my case, I step on that mat, bang, I'm in the zone. You won't touch me. Now, what I had to do for me is go, right, what is important? Okay, I got a photo of my family, mum, dad, my brother. They are important to me. Now, think about this. Think about someone who's good at sport versus someone who's trained to kill you. Now, what I did was go, right, I imagine that I'm there. Oops, I'm drawing. Let me redo that. Okay, let me imagine that that is my family. And me, now, is the only person between this person wanting to get to my family. This is me. How do you now think I was gonna fight when this person was gonna hurt my family and I'm the only person stopping them? Think about that power. So all of a sudden I've changed states from being good at what I was doing to being a killer. So therefore I was now in the right mood and the right state to get that happening. This was powerful. This is how I won most of my events. So typically my fights were three by three minutes. I trained for 30 seconds. 
I trained my fights for 30 seconds because I knew that when I was getting in this mindset, defending my family, this person had no chance. Job done. Think about this. Like I said, this is not as dramatic as what you're going to be experiencing. You'll be surprised with how you actually feel afterwards. So what I would imagine, if I can give you some advice and some assistance now, is next time you put your helmet on, get yourself in a nice relaxed state. You can even write down, okay, the most relaxed where it might be. It might be in your bedroom. So imagine yourself in your bedroom now. So someone just walking past, I know. Imagine yourself in your bedroom now. Okay, nice and relaxed. Bang, helmet goes on. Then think about your best ever result. Write it down. Write down your best ever result. Okay, it might have been when you were 2, 3, 4, 5, 10. It might be if you're 18 now. It might have been when you were 15. The best experience you've ever had within your sport or within any other sport. It might be meeting a, a world champion in the past. It might be going to a sporting event. It might be going to Bathurst thinking, this is what I want to do. And then, future pace yourself. Get yourself out there, close your eyes, put your helmet on, and imagine yourself on the starting grid of Bathurst. Imagine holding up the trophy. Imagine standing there with a bottle of champagne spraying. When you can do that, and then put your helmet on, Sit in that state for a moment. Sit in it, sit in it, and just feel how relaxed you are. Then, take your helmet off, okay? Walk around a bit, sit back down again, take a couple of deep breaths in, put your helmet on, make a very conscious decision to be back into this state. I can guarantee the more you do that, next time you hop in the car, just make it a very conscious, bang, helmet on, and you'll find your emotions will balance themselves out. So if you've now got consistent um, headspace and consistent relaxation, the car is going to be a lot more consistent because you become more mechanical. You become more mechanical because you're not overthinking. You're not overanalyzing. You're just reacting and responding to the environment. And how quickly can you relax? Uh, can you react to new environments? Because all it is is a trigger, what we call a trigger-based response. If anyone knew how powerful your brains were, you'd already be signed up to my programs. Now, you've all seen this? One tennis ball. Okay, now, how did that happen? That one second between here and here, how many calculations do you think went on in my brain? There's neural pathways that connected to that, which connected to that, to that, to that, to that, to that. Okay, that's neural pathways. In your brain, firing, trigger-based results. How did I know how to catch the ball? I've been taught through experiences. The more you're taught through experience, the automatic these things become, like you're driving. So all of a sudden, instead of that taking that long, it's gonna go bang, bang, trigger-based result. Okay, now, Again, how long, how many calculations do you think? Three thousand calculations every second. So when you try to think about hitting your brake markers, hitting your apex, when you think about changing gear, when you think about applying the brakes, you're too late. When you stop, when you relax, when you trust yourself, when you know what the future holds for you, it then gives you a self-confidence and belief that's unshakable. Then it's a matter of going, right, in one three thousandth of a second, you're adjusting for the conditions, for the car, for the tyres. You can just slow yourself down so much that you just respond and react. As I do, if this was a interactive workshop where there's people there, I'll be just throwing this ball at someone. Because the ability you have just to trust it, I never actually say catch it, I'll just throw it. I'll be throwing it behind my back at times and people will be catching. What this does is trust, getting you to the step back, you go, I can trust. Now, 
let me think about overanalyzing, overthinking. If this is you being a race driver and think, ooh, ooh, what could happen, what could happen, what could happen, why bother? Because now you understand you just need to react in one three thousandth of a second when you trust your brain. When you're trying to overthink and overanalyze, you can probably, if you're lucky, um, ten second, you can probably have one conscious thought, sorry, four conscious thoughts every second. Yeah, four conscious thoughts every second instead of 3,000. Four. So what that means is basically if I throw this at you, it's going to take you probably a quarter of a second to register. Normally with this, I'll throw the ball at someone and say, don't catch it. They've caught it and then they go, that's right, I just heard, don't catch it. But their automatic response was to catch it. This is exactly what we need to do to get you to trust. If you start overthinking and overanalyzing, you're going to crash or not have a good result. This is where you can trust yourself. Now, this ball, if you've got something around you right now, like a pen, something light, that you don't mind dropping, probably a good idea. Right, this is overthinking to go, right, this is where the ball's going to land. How can you react or respond to that? You can't now go find the ball. Hang on a sec. Right, got it. Okay, so think about this. When you think that this is what's going to happen, and it doesn't, how do you then react and respond? You've got to just trust, okay? As I say to a lot of my clients, I'm going to throw the ball over this corner, over this corner, over this corner. Right, where's it going to go? You think over here, then I'll throw it over this corner, okay? Their automatic response would be, and catch it. But even though everything's said it's going over here, because the automatic response is already rewired and knows how to catch a ball. When you adjust and adapt your driving to this, every time your helmet goes on, you just sit back into trust. You sit back into relax, you trust your results and the best ever results you've had, you trust your team, your car, your engineers. The best experience you've ever had. It's there. It's a memory. It's a stored memory. So we've now got memory, memory, memory. So what does your brain do? That then becomes a memory because it's all connected. So it'll start helping you relax you, rewind, unwind your brain to get you in that best state you can be. This is how the brain works. And how long does it take to change? Okay. I've given you a bit of an example already. So you understand this, you want to do a screen capture on this one? Go for it. Remember, this is not yours. Yours is a car, or a cart, or a bike, or whatever it might be. Your trigger is not necessarily stepping onto this mat. It potentially is putting on your helmet. Now if you, like any other sport, like any motor racing, hang on, I'll just see if I can find any other athletes of mine, and I will show you some pretty cool images. Okay, I'll find some. Just one minute. It's your brain. Very powerful. Okay, I'll show you one of these. Okay, this will probably make sense to you. Okay, this is one of my drivers. Okay, oh, there's me in the reflection. Okay. This is how I work with my athletes. When they're in my sessions, they've got their helmet on. So think about that. If they're not a, um, okay, yeah. If you're not a, um, how do you call it, a motor racer, I work with golfers, golfer. How's that for a hole in one? How do we do that? Every time they grab the club, they're in that relaxed state. Okay, I've got professional bull riders overseas. I've got professional athletes. I've got footballers. So when they step on the line to run on the field, they're in that headspace. It's a very simple process. Uh, where, where is it? Swimmers. This is one of the fastest swimmers in the country. 50 meter sprint and 100 meter sprint. This is how I work with them. Okay, got the goggles on. Because every time then the goggles go on, it's an automatic trigger to your brain to get in this state. How cool is that? 
So this is your future. This is your future when you choose for it to be that way because it's going to be this easy. Do you have the highs and lows? Yes, you're going to still have them. Yes, you're still going to need to look after your fitness, your health, your happiness. You've still got to look after the, the, the funding. You've still, but this takes all the guesswork out. This takes it to a new level because you don't train nervous. So why would you race nervous? When you're on a simulator, this is one question I asked Matt Campbell years ago when he said, I'm on my simulator, go out in the back shed. Great. Do you have your full race suit on? He goes, no, I just shorts. Why? Simulation is exactly that. Simulation is doing the best you can to simulate the conditions. Put your helmet on. Turn the heat up in the room. Put the full race suit on because that way it's wiring your brain to become successful. When you watch YouTube videos, put your helmet on, put the full gear on, and imagine that you are there replicating your best ever results or future pacing. If you're someone who wants to get in the V8s, put your helmet on and just watch Scott McLaughlin in the car. Watch what the car is doing, watching all the movements, the braking, the adjusting of the bias. All this can help you rewire your brain to make your future a success. Simple, isn't it? I'm just looking at time now, we're up to about 50 minutes. I won't keep you too much longer. I guess at any time you'd probably stop this anyway, couldn't you? Hmm. So, how about pausing for a second while I'm drinking? That's what I do. Okay, so trusting your skills, trusting your abilities. Getting to that peak performance state is very easy when you know how. So how long does it take to change? Okay, I'm gonna give you an example. This is one thing I do at all my seminars, workshops, corporate gigs. So if you're in the business and parents are in the business and you want someone to talk to at your conferences, peak performance, mindset, give me a call. So when I'm doing my seminars, even working with clients, I'll just ask them, how long does it take to change? How long does it take to change a habit, a behavior, a belief? Now this is a, a real example of what I did when working with a group of personal trainers. So personal trainers, you would think, are trained to help people change their life, transform their life. But unfortunately, their communication, their inner conflict, their uh, knowledge wasn't correct. So, I asked the question, how long does it take to change a habit? 21 days, 36 days. 67 days, 15 minutes. These are all the results and I generally get. So I thought, how can I demonstrate how to change? Because who chooses your habits? You do. Behaviors, beliefs, habits, behaviors. You choose them. So therefore, you just gotta choose, don't you? So when you think about this, and I asked one of these big guys, I said, how long does it take I change your habit. I always pick on the big ones. You said 21 days. I went, 21 days? How do you know? It's in the book. Because every book says it's 21 days. I said, so how do you know that book was correct? He goes, well, it is. I said, what if the book said 20 days? Would you believe that? He goes, no, it takes 21. I said, how do you know it takes 21 days? He said, well, the last three things I changed took 21 days for it. Okay, then. I said, so that's your belief. How long does it take to change beliefs? He goes, can't be done there. It's a belief. Mm, okay. So, looked around, surrounded by a paper um, and all these personal trainers sitting on the floor. I went, right, okay. Oh, there's a stapler. I said, pass that stapler over. So I opened it up. I went, right, do you believe I put this staple through my hand? And he said, no. So I did that. Not in there, I took it out earlier. But at the at the time, there was a staple in my hand. Martial arts, I kind of know what I'm doing. Did that take 21 days for him to believe I'd actually do it to myself? No. But this is a powerful part of the story. I then walked up to him and said, right, do you think, do you believe I put this through your leg? Yeah. He was saying yes. So based on me questioning him, based on my response, based on me doing this to him, change his belief that I'd probably do it to him. 
course I would, because he's big anyway. He's a slow runner. I'm fast. So I walked up and went onto his leg, and his leg just went and moved. So isn't that interesting that I can question people with their beliefs, allow their beliefs to then think, oh, that can be changed. And his response and his automatic reaction to this going into his leg was to move. So how long does it take to change a habit? That quick. You've just got to decide. And the decision takes, wait for it, one three thousandth of a second. And in one three thousandth of a second, habits, behaviours, beliefs. So you can choose to get fit. You can choose to be healthy. You can choose to get a new sponsor. The decision takes exactly the same amount of time and then it's a matter of managing it until you get to that point. Some decisions, sorry, some end results and some goals, you might decide now that you're going to be a Formula 1 driver. Okay? Just deciding is not going to become a Formula 1 driver in three thousand, one three thousandths of a second. You might take 15 years to get there. You might take 13. But either way, the decision still takes the same amount of time. Okay? If you're a Formula 2 driver already, okay, you're a lot closer, aren't you? You're probably one or two years off. Okay. Now, so, what about 54 minutes now? I don't want to bore you to death. What I'm going to do is help you. Help you understand and give you some access to tools and resources. Now, what I've done with Belinda is given her the opportunity to... Um, to get everyone who's watching this into the Elite Mindset Institute enrollment program. Now, the great thing is, it's free. Within this, we have podcasts. You can listen to Jackson Evans on one of the podcasts. Um, plus bull riders, uh, world rowing champions, what else have I got, baseball, coach and player, very successful team, Brisbane Bandits here in the here in Brisbane. Uh, last year they won their fourth premiership in a row. And this is the coach who was also one of the first Australian major league players for Milwaukee Brewers over in the United States. So that's all available on podcasts. I've also got in here um, access to a lot of resources and tools. There's the 16 fundamentals of the human mind. Okay, we all hear about people saying you have to change your habits, change your beliefs, change your behaviors, you have to do this, have to do this. Everyone's telling you exactly what you need to do. This book explains how the brain works. And for every one of these 16 fundamentals, there's 16 exercises. So there's one exercise for each chapter, which will help you rewire your brain. Now, you can do it for free, or if you want to, you can do it for a small subscription fee. 19 US per month to get more videos and access to more resources and more tools. Okay, if you want to, there's also my athlete secret weapon eight week program. The eight week program is sports hypnosis, recordings, audios, introductions, videos, workbooks, everything you need to break through to become the champion you want to. Now, for the free bits, there's also my published book. Yes, I'm a published author. Called The book is called The Dear Diary Process. The Dear Diary Process is a process that helps you rewire your brain overnight. And by rewiring your brain, your brain, through what we call neuroplasticity, rewires itself according to neural pathways. So your brain is always probably linked those neural pathways. If you want something different, guess what? You just simply have to go, right, no, this is a path I'm going to follow tomorrow. Okay? I don't want to follow this path anymore. I'm choosing to do this one. The neural pathways can rewire with this DDI process and knowing how to change the way your brain rewires through what we call neuroplasticity, which is intention, that's the outcome I want, and the emotions that you have, which is, that's what I want. Now, if your brain is always doing this, 
the intention is I don't want this, that's a negative, that's a positive. If your brain says I don't want to be stressed, I don't want to crash, I don't want to lose, what's the emotion you attach to it? It's fear, anger, fear, guilt, shame. So you've still got intention and you've still got an emotion connected to it. So it's always going to keep re rewiring itself until you decide to change. Then all of a sudden, bang, that disconnects, that reconnects, and you've now got a different neural loop or neural program. The DDI process can transform your life. So even parents, if you're watching this, you can sign up for free. Get access to it, the DDI process, the book on how to change your thoughts for awesome results. And there's also seminars, workbooks, videos, all available for free. If you want to pay a little bit more, get access, no problems. We're also giving a 50% discount at the moment to the online program, 50% off. So it's $247.50 US dollars. Okay, because US dollars seem to be the way everything's going online. 247 US, that's 50% off. It's normally $495. That gives you access to everything. If you want any personal uh, support, if you want to operate a program with me, directly with me, you're going to get 25%. Okay, 25% off any programs that you may want, okay, uh, on a personal basis. Now, when you're starting at, what, $14.95 for one, two, three, four sessions, we can do it via Skype, you can do it here in my office, which is just next door. Um, or we can do it online. If you've got a group of people, happy to travel and come down with you and work with you. Okay, so what I do is different. Hypnosis is very unknown for a lot of athletes. Mind coaching is, a, is very unknown. We've got the traditional methods that people would think about, which is probably more your sports psychology and down the, uh, you know, yeah, the psychology model. But what I find with that, it's not as effective because they're not really proactive in helping you move forward in your sport. See, psychology is very good. I've got some great connections and friends who are psychologists, but they're very much, uh, I'll draw a picture for you, just cautious of time. Okay, this is you now, that's your past, that's your future. Psychologists are very much getting you to understand who you are now, based on what you've been through. They get you to understand, well, this is why this is happening. This is why you're thinking this way. This is why you're acting and behaving this way. But they're not very focused on helping the athletes go over here. Okay? So motivation is only possible when you have direction. There's your direction. This is a person we're establishing here. Set some goals, some very specific goals. Because then we'll start going, right, I'm going to start doing what that person does. And you'll start finding that this person, the future version of you, is going to start interacting and integrating. What's happened back here is done, it's finished, it's over. Okay? Think about drivers. Do you drive backwards around the track? No. Why? Might crash. So, you're not going this way. And that's what I find, so many people too busy looking back at where they've been. The model that I use when working with people is, right, who are you now? Where do you want to go to in future? What do we need to change here to make that possible? Then we go ahead and make this. Again, we come back to the original equation. Your potential minus your fears. All your fears have been created through your past experiences. If you've been hurt physically, emotionally, anywhere here, your brain goes, well, that one equals that one, that one was negative, therefore, okay? As I said before, you might not be showing up as fears, it might be showing up as self-sabotage, procrastination, doubts, second-guessing, over-analyzing. It could be stress, it could be not sleeping very well, it could be any number of things. This is what fear does, because your brain goes, right, Remember we said it's going to hold back to potential hurt, potential harm? If this is potential harm, physically, emotionally, you want to stay back. That's what's happening. In a racing car, you need to be going faster. The benefit of holding back, there is none. So use this lesson, use the information. Let yourself go forward, 
who you are in the past is irrelevant. Take that away, where your fear's gone. Gone. What we do have is access to all the knowledge, the abilities and skills you have back here without the emotions. So you go, yeah, I know I can drive fast. I believe in myself. I trust myself. Because we're only looking forward now. And just like you have in cars, you have roof, what it, mirrors to reflect, to see how far you've gone. But at least this way you're still looking forward as to where you want to go. So I hope this has been some benefit to you. I'd love to have done this in person. It's a lot more interactive and a lot more beneficial as far as um, at least experiencing what I do. Hypnosis is very different. When you think about the history of it, 1956 Melbourne Olympic Games, there was 11 hypnotherapists that travelled with a, with a Russian team. Russia, number one. Do some research on hypnosis and you'll find it is incredibly powerful and more, um, what is it? more widely used amongst the elite level. And that's why 36 of my clients come to me. They're looking for the edge in their sport. This is why some incredible drivers who are currently travelling the world, living their dream on scholarships and fully funded, this is why they come to me. They're looking for the edge. So give yourself the best opportunity for your racing because you've got access to people like Belinda. You've got access to branding, social media. You've got access to nutrition, exercise, diet. You've got all these to help you become this person. And I really would love to be able to help you as well, to be able to use your name alongside the Matt Campbells, the Jackson Evans, the Hunter McElroy's of the world. I'd love for you to be one of my next world champions that I've got. So please stay focused on your dream. Don't ever let anyone tell you you can or cannot do it. If you think you can do it, stick with that in your brain and we'll make it happen. So please get in contact with me, Stuart Walter, on Instagram, Facebook. I'm sure Belinda from Motivate is going to have all the um, connections and all the details there, as I will for the free uh, enrollment program, plus access to the link for the Athlete Secret Weapon Online program. So I won't wish you the best of luck, because you don't need luck, you've got the skills within you. So you just enjoy your new life. It's your future, your way. Have an awesome time. Take care. Bye. Well, thanks everyone for listening to this week's show. I really hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. Now remember all the show notes with the links and the specials mentioned in today's show are available over at motivatetraining.com.au. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate if you could head to iTunes or Stitcher, type in motorsport coaching, subscribe and leave us a review. Each week, I'll read them out and you'll go into monthly draw to win a fantastic prize. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at motivatetraining.com.au or head over to our Facebook page at motivate.t. Until next time, take care.